looking to relocate to Los Angeles or maybe move within neighborhoods of the city, but not quite sure where to go, well, I don't blame you. LA's the second biggest city in America, over 500 square miles with 400 neighborhoods. So when it comes to choosing where to live, you have a huge amount of opportunity. So today, in this video, I'm gonna give you my 10 favorite neighborhoods in LA County, tell you a little bit about why, so hopefully you can make a, a better decision on where to move. I'm Matt Tilly, the British bloke. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. And please like and subscribe if you're looking to watch more videos about what it's like to live in LA County. I'll be doing three videos a week. So uh, subscribe, smash the bell. That way you don't miss any videos moving forward. And wait till the end of the video. I'm gonna be talking about what I think is one of LA's best kept secrets on where to live. And also my five favorite restaurants in LA County that you should definitely check out. All right, let's get to the video. In 10th place is Malibu, and I was definitely hesitant about putting it on my list. It just pushed out Atwater Village, but I thought Malibu had to be on it. It's got the iconic beaches. Yes, it's secluded, but now with more people working from home, it makes Malibu a lot easier place to live in when you have a job. And yes, it is expensive, but you can get homes for under 1.5 million, condos around a million, and you can rent one or two bedroom homes for uh, condos for around 2,500 to 3,000 a month. So I've put Malibu on the list just because it's one of the most iconic uh, neighborhoods in Los Angeles County and uh, I had to put it on there. In ninth place, Highland Park. I really think it's going places. Los Feliz Silver Lake 25 years ago was not a place you wanted to live in and now look, they're thriving and Highland Park is going that way. It's not quite Los Feliz yes, yet, but it's trendy, it's hip, it's got the restaurants. You can buy houses for around a million, you can rent for around 2,500 a month. It's got the freeways. Um, if you ask me, if you're buying into Highland Park right now, you're gonna see a great return, uh, more return on your money probably than buying anywhere else on this list. So Highland Park is on the list just because the, uh, the potential that it has. Yes, it's already a really, really good place. There are some sketchy areas, but as far as I'm concerned, out of all the neighborhoods on the list today, Highland Park is going up more than anywhere else. So if you wanna get into somewhere right now that maybe is not perfect, but has the opportunity to be perfect, Highland Park's the place for you. Number eight and seven on the list, Playa del Rey and Playa Vista. I've kind of combined them. They're both very small neighborhoods, so I've kind of put them together, um, seeing that they're right next door to each other. I love this neighborhood. It's really brand new, up and coming, new condos, new restaurants, bars. It's very student orientated, which means the prices are lower than the nearby Santa Monica or Venice. You've got LAX um, airport five minutes away. The walkability is great. You've got the beaches, the quieter beaches just south of Venice and Santa Monica. Silicon Valley, so you've got a lot of startups, a lot of new jobs drawing people in. Because of that, it's not cheap, but you can find houses for around 1.5 million, condos for under a million, Rent is around about two and a half thousand a month to three thousand a month, closer to three thousand a month really because of the new builders. Um, the schools are great, it's safe. It's, I'm a really big fan of this place. When I walked around it, I was kind of in shock. It doesn't really feel like Los Angeles. It's super clean um, and it's certainly a place that you should check out if you're looking to relocate here or, or move within Los Angeles. In number five, I've put Beverly Wood and Cheviot Hills. Just because if you wanna live near Beverly Hills but don't wanna pay the crazy prices, this neighborhood is great for you. Yes, the walkability's not great, the nightlife, the nightlife's not great, but it's safe, it's got the green park, some golf courses, and if you're looking for a beautiful neighborhood, relatively affordable, you can get nice homes for about 1.7 million, fixes for about 1.3 million, um, and you can rent for about 2,600 a month to 3,000 a month plus, depending on what you want. But Beverly Wood, Cheviot Hills, yes, the walkability is not great, the nightlife's not great, but if you have a family and you want to live near Beverly Hills but not pay the prices, 
this is a great spot for you. Number four might raise some eyebrows, but I really feel as though it's turned the corner and is improving year on year, and that's downtown Los Angeles. It's got the metro, you're right by the freeways, the affordability I think is still good. Not many single family homes, but you can buy a condo for a million dollars, a nice condo for about 1.2. Rent's gone up a lot, but you're looking around about 25 to 3,500 a month for one or two bedroom homes. But it's got the clubs, the bars. If you're looking for more of a nightlife vibe, more of a city vibe, um, downtown LA gives you that. You've got the museums and you're kind of centrally located depending on if you want to head south, if you want to head north, if you want to head to the beaches of uh, Venice or Santa Monica, or if you want to head to Los Feliz. It's, it's kind of a really uh, great location in Los Angeles. Um, so downtown LA, yes, there's homeless, yes, there's crime, um, but I think it's getting better and better and better. Some really trendy restaurants, um, which is why I've put it on my list. Number three on the list was between Los Feliz and Silver Lake. And for me, Los Feliz just wins out. I absolutely love this neighborhood. I lived there for eight years. All sorts of people. Uh, if you want the three, four, five million dollar homes, you have. But if you want to rent a one bedroom condo, you can. It's a melting pot of activity. The restaurant, the bars, you've got Griffith Park, you've got the Greek theater, Hollywood Bowl. There's a lot of industry type people there. Um, it's just a really great place to live. Some of my favorite restaurants. The reason I didn't have it higher up on the list is it's kind of away from everywhere. <laughs> if you want to get to Venice, it's an hour. Uh, Beverly Hills, depending on where you're working. Um, but if you work from home, or if you work in downtown LA, uh, Los Feliz, as far as I'm concerned, really, really hard to beat. The schools are good. Um, it's just a safe neighborhood as far as I'm concerned. Seems like a young crowd. Uh, I'm a huge fan. You should definitely check that out. But like I said, it is a little bit far away um, from the beaches, if that's what you're looking for. Um, but Los Feliz, mwah. Number two on the list, Santa Monica. I think everyone around America has heard of Santa Monica, the beaches, the vibe. Um, it was tough not to put it number one, um, but I think the homeless issue now, which is getting bigger in Santa Monica for me, kept it off there. But you've got a young crowd, you've got the walkability, um, beautiful restaurants and bars, good schools, homes are expensive. <laughs> They're around about $2 million. Um, yes, you can buy some condos, um, for about 1.2 and under. But for a decent home in Santa Monica, you are looking around about 2 million. Um, rentals there are pretty steep as well, which is why another reason I didn't put it number one. Really, you're looking between three and 4,000 a month for a one or two bedroom condo. But you're right by the beautiful, world famous beaches. And to be honest, you don't even really need to leave Santa Monica. <laughs> Your friends will want to visit you. Um, it's a great place to live. Um, definitely should check it out. It is obviously far from downtown LA. Um, it's closer to Beverly Hills than Los Feliz, but it's not exactly right next door. Uh, but Santa Monica, to be honest, ticks all the boxes. Walkability's great, safety's great, uh, has the nightlife, um, good for families. Yes, homelessness is on the rise. Yes, it is expensive. Um, but uh, a really, really good place to live and I would definitely check it out if you're looking uh, at a neighborhood in Los Angeles. And number one on the list for me, and it's gonna probably be contentious, <laughs> Culver City. And why do I like Culver City as number one? The location, it's more central if you're downtown, if you're in Beverly, if you work in downtown or Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, um, you're just in a better location. The prices are better than other neighborhoods that I've mentioned. Um, Silicon Valley's moving in, so there's a lot of tech jobs. It's got a young vibe as well. Prices are better. You can buy a house in Culver City, 1.5 million. Rent slightly cheaper than Santa Monica and the other areas that I was mentioning. Um, it's safe. There's the restaurant, the bars. Yes, Culver City kind of closes a little bit earlier, I think. I don't think you see many people out partying at 11 o'clock at night in Culver City. It's the work-life balance there, I think, is key. They're more likely people living in Culver City to get up at 6 a.m. and be in bed by 10, uh, 10 p.m. 
So if you're going there for a nightlife, probably not the place to go. But if you're millennials or, or young professionals and even young families, Culver City for me, prices, location, safety, um, homelessness is way better than in other areas nearby. I think it's um, a really great spot. So um, check that out. Let me know what you think. And now I'm gonna tell you a hidden gem in LA County if you're living on a budget and my five restaurants. So stay tuned. Okay, so I know it didn't make the top 10 list, but if you're on a budget, and I think it's one of the best kept secrets in LA County, and that's Long Beach. Yes, it's far away from Santa Monica, um, but there's the fast track to downtown uh, LA. And if you're a family and look at wanting to live in a really great community vibe, there's parts of neighborhoods that I just mentioned where it's hard to make friends. Maybe the community vibe isn't quite so vibrant. Long Beach, people have lived there for most of their lives. People generally don't move out of Long Beach. The schools are good. The crime rate is a little higher than the national average, but it's improving year on out. Uh, homelessness is uh, an issue if you ask a lot of people, but it's no worse if you ask me than Venice, Santa Monica, downtown LA. Um, and you can buy homes for a million dollars or less. So if you're not too bothered about living in a trendy, hip um, city, check out Long Beach, 169 parks, beautiful beaches. There are now trendy restaurants. And if you're on a three, four, five million dollar budget, Long Beach has you covered as well. Beautiful homes on the water, uh, mega mansions at Virginia Country Club. It has the golf courses. Um, so yes, Long Beach has a bad rap and it's not really ideally located if you're working in Santa Monica, Venice, Beverly Hills, Hollywood. But like I said, if you're looking for a family vibe community, I would 100% uh, check out Long Beach um, because you might be surprised what you find. Okay, and finally, my five favorite restaurants you must check out if you're in LA. Number one, Musso and Frank. It's been there a hundred years. If you like martinis, wow. The rich and the famous have written scripts, had meetings there. The waiters have been lifetime waiters there, 30, 40 years. The food is delicious, steaks, pasta, it has a bit of everything. The vibe, you can sit at the bar, you can have a booth. I recently sat in the Jack Nicholson booth. So if you're looking for a nice restaurant that's not even that expensive, it's expensive, but compared to some restaurants in LA, it's not crazy. You have to check out Musso and Frank on Hollywood Boulevard. Number two on the list, Cafe Stella in Silver Lake. French restaurant, the outdoor area is incredible with the lights, they have Bar Stella downstairs. The vibe is incredible. The food, the wine is absolutely delicious. The service, Cafe Stella, you have to check it out. Number three, Jelena. Did I pronounce that right? In Venice. It's great for lunch or dinner, several different items. It's a great place to share food. It's extremely healthy. The hustle and bustle of this place is great. Um, it's a really, really good restaurant. Okay, if you wanna go for a nice lunch, get a, a baguette, maybe a pastry, a delicious coffee, go to Proof Cafe in uh, Atwater Village. It is incredible. They'll make you these beautiful little sandwiches. The um, pastries are unbelievable. Um, and the coffee, well, it's some of the best I've had in LA. So Proof Cafe in Atwater Village, I think it's open until 3 p.m. Uh, it's a must, definitely go and try it. And finally, L'Opera in Long Beach, LA's best kept secret, Long Beach. Go check out L'Opera. They have professional singers. They'll come and sing opera to you at your table. The wine, the menu's incredible. The service, uh, the decor, the restaurant, you feel so special. Um, and the food, divine. Um, so L'Opera, it's in downtown Long Beach. Easy to get to by the metro if you don't want to park and have a few drinks. Uh, I would definitely check that out. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Comment below if I missed anything or if you have better neighborhoods. And if you're looking to make a move within the next nine or 90 days, give me a call, shoot me a text, write me an email. I would love to help you make a smooth move. All right, I'll see you at the next video.